Hi, this is Marcus Giuliano from MarcusG.TV. I'm a chef on a mission. Mission for better food, better restaurant food, better food for our kids, um, better relationships with our producers, better wine, better beer, just a better food and dining experience. Today's topic is health. What do we have, Jamie, on health? Well, I just picked this up from Reuters. Um, it is, Ecuador wants you to smell the roses and eat them. And eat them too. And eat them too. Ecuador has long been a major exporter of big, bold, colorful flowers that please the eye and the nose. Now its farmers are exploring a new idea, roses that you can eat. So restaurants from New York to Barcelona are now incorporating roses Edible roses. Edible, edible roses. There's a difference. There's a difference. Edible roses into their into a dining experience. Now here's the difference between an edible rose and a non-edible rose. Now Earl Mendel, the guy who wrote the Herb Bible, claims that 98% of all the Earth's vegetation is edible. Okay. Now roses would be edible. You wouldn't want to eat roses that are sprayed with chemicals. No. Because most of the rose, most probably all of the roses that you can find in a florist are going to be sprayed with chemicals because they're there to look good. They're not there to eat. And even food, our food is meant to look good, even though they spray it down with chemicals. But all that stuff is going to be, have heavy chemicals on it. So here's a story about a farmer in Ecuador that is But well, what's now the reasons that they really spray things? They spray and use pesticides and antibi um, pesticides for what reason? So they get more yield. They get more yield. Right. They get less bugs. They get less blemishes. They get more yield. They get So things softer, look better. They're prettier. And they probably last longer, too. Right. So, um, now, I've been an advocate of eating roses for how long, Jamie? Long time. Ten years. I've said for over ten years, edible flowers are so packed with nutrients. In fact, there's so many phytochemicals in flowers that the science does not even begin to unlock these phytochemicals. Those are the phytochemicals are the stuff that, that plants have that can now go in and repair your body. So, the phytonutrients, the phytochemicals in roses and other flowers are astronomical compared to um, plants. So this has been something that I've been on the forefront for 10 years, saying this is going to start happening, it needs to happen. And companies sell what's called edible flowers or edible mixed bloomers, which like are, um, you know, pansies. Pansies are edible. Um, and in fact, you can walk into your garden, like tea, Jamie, like clover tea. Right. Clover, that's the flower of the clover plant, and that's edible. Um, Justin and I go around all summer picking it and sucking the nectar out of those and eating the flowers. Those are totally edible. So flowers are edible. Yes. 100%. We eat zucchini flowers. Zucchini, right. zucchini flowers are edible. So don't get thrown off by saying, oh, roses, I wouldn't eat those. We're already eating and there's stuff already on the market for eating flowers. Now, here's the interesting thing. This article doesn't talk about the health benefits, does it? No, it does not. No, it doesn't say anything about the health benefits. Just the They're talking about this This particular article is about roses and using it to make dishes look prettier. Look pretty. To make them, um, you know, to, to kind to of find a new, a new aspect. So this gentleman to, grows how many rose rose bushes? A million, ten million rose bushes that he says he um, saw in the article? His farm stands on uh, 2,800 meters above sea level. He employs 500 employees and ships 20 million stems a year. Wow. Edible petals are a tiny part of his business for now. Very tiny part. So he has 3 million bushes under cultivation. 3 million and only 100,000 100, of those rose bushes are without pesticides and meant for eating. That's a fraction of his business. Okay, this is not something, something that's big yet. Now, when we smell a rose, Jamie, what happens? Ah, they are saying, though, that roses offer benefits such as calcium and vitamin C. So the further down in the article you go... So there is a little bit about... about but we're going to talk about really what roses are, are really truly about. When you smell a rose, Jamie, what happens? Oh, your whole demeanor changes. Everything your, changes. Everything changes. You're just like you... It's like you a breath of fresh happy. air. You the breath of fresh air. That's, Why do they use roses at weddings? Because roses are a... Roses happy. are for love. Roses love. are, you know... The neat thing about roses are roses are one of the highest charged vibrational vibrational frequency um, plants. F we consume food that has vibrational frequencies. This is how this all starts. Let's start from the beginning. We have we consume food that uh, that has energy to it. Megahertz is is an equivalent of energy. Well, everything you're eating has energy or lack of energy. So, for instance, if you're having like a piece of chocolate cake or McDonald's cake, you're talking about like maybe maybe five a McDonald's uh, Big Mac. 
you're talking about maybe maybe five megahertz of energy if you're lucky, like one to five megahertz of energy. Did you know our body um, requires certain megahertz to actually function, Jamie? Yeah. So for instance, our brain requires, I don't know, 70, 80, I just had something here, um, a little bit that, that was talking about, well, here we go. Um, the human brain requires 72 to 90 megahertz to function. So if you're eating chocolate cake and Big Macs all day, you're going to have a megahertz deficiency. You're going to have a very hard time functioning. Functioning, yes. Um, a human body, during the daytime, 62 to 68 megahertz. You have an electrical charge. We are an electrical charge. We, we have this charge. The cold requires 58 megahertz. Do you know cancer is like 40, it requires like 40 megahertz, cancer? To, you know, um, Candida, 55 megahertz. Um, cancer, 42 here, I just read that. Um, processed canned foods, zero megahertz. And something that's processed or canned, processed or canned foods. So a can of like, I don't know, beans, a can of peas, a can of carrots. And I'm assuming the same is true for baby food, right? I would assume. Jarred baby food, that's processed, it's pasteurized, it's killed, it's dead. This is why raw foods are so important in, in your diet. Um, live sprouts, 150 megahertz, twice what our body requires to run, twice. So you see the correlation? So you can totally Almonds, probably feel a difference when you have, when you have those live foods. foods in your body, which we have experienced. Now cucumbers, wheatgrass, green leafy vegetables, raw, truly raw almonds, those are going to range like from 50 to 100 megahertz. So those are enough megahertz to, that our body require to go. You know. Now, essential oils, Jamie, this is really great. These essential oils that we love, especially the ones, the ones we, we love from Young Living, these are charged with 52 to 320 megahertz. Guess which is 320 megahertz, Jamie? The rose. The rose. The rose is the highest charged food, um, plant matter out there. So you can actually walk up and eat a rose. But if you're growing roses in the back of your yard and you're not spraying them and they're organic, you know, go up and nibble on it. Go up and grab a piece. Nibble on it. Take it and, and pick it and put it in your salad and mix it in with the greens. That's one of the best ways to get it. Put it with dessert. Um, they make rose water. They make available uh, commercial rose water available for restaurants. You have restaurants. to be careful though because it, some of them it's do processed. have sugar it's, in them. It's all well. sugared. It's, it's with simple syrup, corn syrup. It's all processed, but rose water is a common ingredient in, at bars for mixed drinks. mixed drinks. So how are they making rose water? They're make, taking roses and infusing it into some kind of water or distilling it and getting the runoff of the water. Or what it said in this article was that they take the roses and they let them sit in vodka and then they make a vodka infused rose, rose. rose martini. So, you know, roses, roses are it. Roses are underrated. Incorporate rose petals into your diet without a doubt. Somehow, this is summertime. You have roses are very romantic as roses well. Roses are romantic as well. So you know, um, there's a reason for roses. 320 megahertz, um, highest charged food. You are what you eat. Eat food with. I call it the vital life force. I call megahertz the vital life force in food. That's what. That's where the packed energy is. And of course, if you were to take those rose petals, Jamie, if you were to cook them. They're not going to be the same. No, because just it's just like lose. a green bean. You cook a green bean, you can it. You take an apple, you cook it, and put it in an apple pie. It's a totally different thing. That's why you know, like McDonald's, their Big Mac is you know up to five megahertz because they probably have a little bit of lettuce and tomato on there. I'm assuming that's where the energy is coming because it's not in the in the cooked meat. And it's not in, in in the white flour bread. You know, it's just, it's just not in there. So you are what you eat. Today's lesson: eat roses. Smell the roses and eat them too.